Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about just intonation or something similar to that. As part of this uh, forbidden music series that I'm developing, I want to show you a tool that I made uh, some years ago. It's a really weird tool because it's, I, I've been sort of improvising it and it's full of quirks, but it also is a very interesting tool and I have been able to explore a lot with it. And in particular, I'm gonna show you how to make intonations based on ratios. In particular, how, to, how you can build a tuning system by multiplying a bass frequency by a series of fractions or numbers. Uh, this method to make a tuning system can lead to very uncomfortable listening experiences and that's uh, what really I find interesting because that means that you are getting very quite outside of the things that we are used, used to listening to. So if you are interested in creating melodies that most likely have never been created before, never heard before, then stay in this video and I'm gonna show you one technique. Head over to autotel.co slash tuning dash explorer. I'm gonna paste the link down here in the description. You're gonna get the text that says clicks to start. So you go there. If it looks a bit weird, you can try zooming in and out. And it's gonna get a different layouts. Now, this thing I did it a uh, few years ago and it's very experimental. It's full of quirks, so you know, bear with me. There's a lot of madness going on here. And there's also a lot to show and explain. Maybe if there's enough interest, I can develop a newer version that's sort of more user-friendly. Or maybe I can integrate it to my piano roll. In this wheel, we can play notes by hovering on the little dots. And currently we have a 12 tone sequel temperament. That's why there are these uh, 12 different columns along the, the spiral. If you notice, each column is a octave. So it, that means that each rotation of this spiral, it's, it, it's one octave increase in tone. You can change the relationships by dragging this little controller here. Or you can also click on the different fractions. And yeah, I left that animation here because I think it's kind of cool. But if you double click it, it's going to jump right to the, to the number you select. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it just in the octave setting here. And uh, since I want to make uh, just intonation I'm among these different uh, tab-like buttons, I'm gonna select ratios. So here are, I get three columns and one number at the top. This number at the, at the top is the base frequency. And these two columns are multipliers. And the third here is the result of multiplying all the numbers I've written in the first column and all the numbers I've written in the second column. Now, the third column has a weird quirk. Sometimes it divides all the results by two or by four, so that's really weird, but uh, the results you get in this uh, circle as well as in this piano-like keys down here are the results of multiplying this by all the numbers this here and also by all the numbers here. If two of the results are the same, they're gonna be ignored. So, for example, I have the number 60 here. It's 60 hertz. I'm gonna write the number one. I'm gonna write the number one to get the 60 hertz. Now the whole Spiral is reset. I only have one tone and one key here of 60. If I write the I write the powers of two and in that way I get the sequence of octaves. Uh, 
I'm gonna get, get you know, only one key for each one of these numbers. I'm gonna get, get one column in the spiral here. So we've got, we have here a one tone equal temperament. Oops. The thing is gonna filter out all the ultrasonic frequencies. So if I add the 1024, it's no, no, no longer gonna add it. And now I in the second column, I can add, for example, two thirds. And that's already gonna create a column with eight tones already, it seems. So that's the result of multiplying two thirds for times each one of these numbers times the bias frequency. So therefore we get uh, 17 tones. You know, the 18th tone is filtered out due to being inaudible. Yeah, so I can go along and write, you know, whichever fractions tickle my curiosity. Yeah, if I write, uh, for example, one half, that's not gonna create any frequency because that's already covered by the list of squares of two. So one half of fourth is two, and therefore I'm not gonna create twice the same note. So we already get some really nice uh, tone relations that are very unfamiliar and that's that's the most interesting bit of this exercise to create unfamiliar intervals. Okay, so I have uh, this really weird scale. On each octave I have 11 tones. And it has very unfamiliar intervals, which, I, which it's what I'm going to. But it has consistency across the octaves. And also there's some consistency between the different tones. So I'm gonna mess this a bit up and try different relationships so it makes it easier for me to play stranger intervals we can see that different little clouds of tones emerge while rotating this We are not focused on a text field. I can also use the computer keyboard. I can go to the list of frequencies. For example, here I find that I have the tones are too low and the keyboard is not enough, you know, to play all of them. So I could delete some of these frequencies. But take into account that you're not gonna be able to go back to the ratios. You can, you know, use this calculate from frequency list back, but then all the frequencies are going to end up, you know, pretty weird. But, you know, that's fine for me. So maybe I start with 100 hertz. I, can, I also want to change a bit the, the timber. There's not a lot to do here, but... A little bit goes a long way.
I think that sounds really cool. And also you can control it with a MIDI controller, so. Okay, so first of all, I had to change to Chrome because with Firefox it's not possible to uh, get MIDI input or, well, it is possible, but it's a, a bit complicated. I didn't, didn't want to get there. But I basically plugged in this uh, MIDI keyboard and it can work. And now I can play the tones on my on my tuning system with the keys. A problem that I'm facing is that my my arbitrary tuning that I just created has 11 tones per octave, but the keyboard, as we all know, has 12 tones. So if I want to play an octave, then it's this. And yeah, I don't really like this. So I created the this setting here, the MIDI tab here, and you can see that there's a, this representation of the 12 tones keyboard. If you click one of the keys, it's gonna gray out, and that means that that key becomes disabled. And since, since it's disabled, now I have the 12 tones mapped to the 12 tones of the keyboard. I can play an octave by playing the two Cs, for example. Every note I play, if it's graphically the same, then it's gonna be also an octave. Because I have 11 tones per octave, and I have disabled one of the MIDI octave tones. Hey, so I hope this video really inspired you to create something. And if it does inspire you, uh, please do share it with me. Perhaps I can share it in my social platforms or whatnot. Also, you are in invited to follow me on Patreon. You don't necessarily have to pay in order to follow somebody in Patreon. I think it's uh, gonna start working more and more as a sort of social network. But this time you follow people uh, regarding you're interested in what, in what you're, they are doing. So, For me it's a great way to get encouraged to see that people are interested about the stuff that I, I share. In that way I also get an idea how to tailor what I do more to the people who are actually checking my content. Okay, so go on, try it out and I hope you are gonna have a lot of fun with it. Bye!